Well, things are progressing, as you might expect, uh, working in the background, and I thought I would talk a little bit about lap joints. So a lap joint is probably exactly what you think it is. It's, it's when the aluminum skin has one piece and another piece overlaps it, you have what's called a lap joint. The, the thing with lap joints is if you don't treat them with respect, you can screw them up very quickly. And the primary way is you can kind of cause this uh, buckling or ridge, ridges to form between the rivets uh, if, you know, at, at the edge of that lap joint, which ca could cause water to come in or corrosion or other issues, if you don't pay attention to the edge and how the edge needs to be formed. They have a term uh, called an edge break. Uh, you're not breaking anything. In fact, you're just slightly bending it ever so slightly. Uh, and I thought I would talk about that a little. In the book, uh, I think it's 5.10, they talk about lap joints and how to do the edge breaks. Um, a lot of times <clears throat> people will just kind of bend it down a little bit with their thumb and that's fine. I mean, if that's, if that's what you want to go for. I personally wanted a little bit more of a uniform uh, bend along the entire thing, but that bend amount needs to be so minor. You, you absolutely uh, need to not overdo that because uh, that would just cause problems of a different nature. So they make a tool. Um, it's one of these vice grip tools, and you're going to see a lot of these, by the way. When you're buying tools, you're going to get various tools that you've seen me use before. Here's one for dimpling. Uh, here's one, you know, I've got a bunch of different vice grip tools where they literally just weld onto a vice grip the actual tool. It's really clever, actually. But <clears throat> this one is a tool designed so that when you put the aluminum in here, the skin, you give it a crimp and you don't do it very tightly. In fact, you should be able to just almost lift this straight off of it. It's such a, a loose crimp. You'd think with a vice grip that you really want to jam it down there. Uh, you don't. In fact, they even put a nut on the end here so that you don't overdo it. Uh, but you put it on there and you pull it along the skin to give it that ever so slight bend. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here we have our trusty piece of scrap skin that I screwed up. Um, and we have our edge brake tool. Uh, again, when you put this on here, you want to make sure that it's just barely sitting on there. There's actually a little line on uh, this tool that that's the point at which the bend is gonna happen. And so when you put your tool on here the first time, you wanna make sure that it's not on there so tightly you can't just pull it right off. But by the way, don't do that on your actual skins because uh, it will create a little mark. But you wanna be able to keep it really loose. So I put it on there. Once you've got it tightened, you've got it to the point where it's, it's, it's where you think it should be. That gap is where you should think it should be. You put it all the way up to this little ridge on the end. Pull it down and then just give it an ever so slight pull all the way, all the way off. And you can do it a couple times. You don't want to over uh, tighten or over torque the tool because what ends up happening is you can actually squeeze this and it doesn't just bend it, but it actually mashes it, elongates it, and that actually makes the situation worse, which you don't want. You're, you're just trying to impart an ever so slight bend. And now I'm gonna do the best I can to take a picture of that ever so slight bend so you can see what I'm talking about. It is, it is so minor, it's hard to envision. Let me see what I can do here. I'm not sure if you can see it this bend along here. I mean, it is so minor. It's, it, it's, it's a, just an incredibly minor downward cant. And it's what you want. Obviously it only goes to about here because I only did a little bit of it, but you do the whole skin. It's a, yet another one of those skin preparation things that you definitely want to do. Uh, there are other tools out there that you can use other than this. Um, I've got one of those duck build uh, it's a real long, it's, you know, it's a, a vice grip uh, that has got about that long of a, of a tool on it that you can sit here and go, you know, bend down, down, down as you work it. I don't like it. Uh, it's very difficult to get a consistent bend, personally. This is the EF-60 EF um, edge forming tool. I got it at Cleveland Aircraft and it was like $38 or $40. I think it's worth it. Again, don't over crimp it. You don't want to tighten this thing down so that you got to really crimp it on there and you know pull it because all that's going to do is um, 
smash the aluminum and uh, cause ripples to form. You're actually making ripples at that point. The whole point of this is to get rid of ripples. So definitely don't overdo it. Um, and you, you have to do this before you do any dimpling or anything. So just make it part of, uh, part of your skin preparation if you know that you have one piece of skin overlapping another piece of skin. Do this. So that's it. Oh, it's, it's a 5.10 in the book I just checked. Also, uh, an addendum to my last video about skins. Uh, the skin preparation that I had talked to is also in the book. Uh, and I don't remember the number. I'd have to go look. But it's also in the book. And uh, even I had said previously that you probably don't have to do it. Actually, you do. So... Yay, validation. <laughs> so anyways, that's it. I'm going to continue working on this thing, continue putting the aileron together. Got some uh, uh, break, edge breaks to create on that forward rolled skin. And uh, then it's about riveting it all together and having a fully functioning aileron. Fun, fun. 5.2. 5.2 is the section in the book that they send you that talks about edge forming and deburring and cleaning up the edges. Uh, and it, it does go in there and talk to it about that. Um, other than that, uh, you can see I'm back at it in the background. And oh, I wanted to say uh, thank you everybody for the positive feedback on the Patreon campaign. It's up and running. Everything is, is uh, working smoothly. I already have a bunch of supporters. Thank you so much for those of you that actually supported. Still blows me away. Um, and yeah. I've had a couple of people ask me uh, over the course of the last couple of days uh, as to how my flying is going. Um, thanks for asking. Uh, first of all, the reason they're asking is because I'm not a pilot yet. I'm still a student. Uh, blows a lot of people away. The notion that I'm building an airplane without having even got a, gotten a pilot's license yet. Again, you can do it too. Um, I'm studying. I've already passed the FAA test, I've already soloed, I've done a bunch of solo cross countries, and I'm waiting to do another long solo cross country right now. Uh, but the weather has not really been a, uh, helping. Actually, the weather is great. We've got this beautiful high over us right now, and it's, it's calm and still and with a minor breeze. The problem is it's also extremely dry. And um, you can see here this TFR map, there's like 10 fires around the airport that I, uh, I fly out of, and that is causing this massive layer of smoke to roll, roll in, and um, I'm not flying in those conditions. First of all, it's, it's illegal. If you can't see the ground, you know, I, as a student, I can't fly. But also, it's also just a personal minimums thing. Like, I'm not flying if I can't see. Um, not until I am thoroughly IFR <laughs> qualified. Um, and so, yeah, um, in this picture right here, you can see that that's the sun. And this was like at 4.30 or so. And that sucks. It, you, there's just so much smoke in the air right now. And this has been going on for um, about 14 days, almost two weeks. Uh, well, 14 days is two weeks. But I mean, it's been going on for two weeks and, and it sucks. Uh, and come to find out, by the way, these are all intentionally set with the exception of one. This is all arson. That sucks. Don't do that. Why would you do that? But uh, so that's my flying. Uh, I'm enjoying the flying, having a good time. Uh, wish I had a plane of my own. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now um, I'm, I'm close to doing the check ride. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, I need to study more. I feel like I just don't know enough. I mean, even though I've passed the written test, going and sitting with Don, my local tester, and having him query and question and, and just you know, beat the questions out of me or beat the answers out of me. Uh, even though he's going to be incredibly fair and he's a good guy, I know him. He's a he's a really good guy. But I want to do well. I'm I'm the guy that I always want to over prepare so that when I walk out of the question or walk out of the test, I go, wow, I overstudied for that. That was easy. That's that's my goal. I'm that guy. And so I always feel like until after I take the test, I don't know how hard it's going to be. So I just over, 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 over prepare. Uh, and even then I'm much harder on myself than most testers are on me. So anyways, that's where I'm at on my flying. Uh, again, you don't need to be a pilot to build a plane. Um, you just need to be a pilot to fly it. So uh, don't let that be something that stops you. If you want to build a plane, you can. You don't need to be a pilot. Not yet, anyway.
So finally, I'm gonna close uh, this particular video with a concern I have. Been working on the aileron, um, working in the background, and I'm worried that I've imparted a twist. So they talk about this all the time. I mean, one of the things that you absolutely don't want is to have any kind of twist in your aileron because that twisting, uh, you, it's not like you can put an equal twist on the other side and counter it out or anything like that. It just, it's pretty much a do-over on ailerons when you do that. And as a general rule, <clears throat> the twist happens at the edge. So if, you, if you're at the edge of the aileron and you're, you're putting the, the two pieces together and you start from the left side and just go all the way across the right side, that's a real good way to impart a twist. I'm not there yet. I haven't even started on the edge. But when I lay the aileron down on the table, ever so slightly one side is just, just slightly higher than the other. I mean, it's not even, not even a centimeter, but it's ever so slightly higher. And I'm looking at it trying to figure out how did I manage to do that? Um, and I don't know the answer. Uh, it, so it, it may all work out to be just fine, uh, or I may have just made a horrible mistake and you're gonna get to see me uh, curse a lot and do a massive do-over with regards to the aileron. I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting. Um, I hope I didn't because I don't want to have to buy all the parts. I mean, it'll probably only be like, you know, 200 bucks or whatever to get everything to redo an aileron. So it's not a huge deal. Uh, but if I did it once and I don't know what I did, then there's a real good chance I'll do it again, which of course you don't want. I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know, you know, keep working in the background. And uh, if there is a twist, I won't hide it from you. I'll point it all out. I'll try to give you my mistakes as I always do. Uh, hopefully, wish me luck that there isn't. And that's all there is this time. I really appreciate it, everybody. Thank you for my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. I love you. And um, yeah, thanks everybody. Give me a thumbs up if you would or subscribe if you're not. It helps with the Google rankings. And I'll see you next time.